a very good morning to all of you i am yashwant kanetkar and in this course we have already seen through two container types namely lists and tuples it is time to move on to the third one that is a container type known as set and that is what we plan to do now first question that we need to ask ourselves is what really is a set well answer to that question is that it's an unordered collection meaning of unordered collection is that the order in which you insert the elements in a set and the order in which you access them these orders are likely to be different they might be same in some situation but more often than not that order is likely to be different means it's not position based indexing through which we will access the elements of a set another speciality of a set container type is that elements within it are always unique if you attempt to store same elements for example here we are trying to create a set and planning to store in it all tens if you attempt to do that realize that only one ten is going to get stored out of four only one will get stored easy way to identify a set is using the braces associated with the values these braces tell us that it's a set had it been brackets it would have become a list had they been parentheses it would have become a tuple braces indicate that it's a set set is nothing but a collection of unique elements where insertion order and access order are likely to be different if i am to show you some examples of sets then well a empty set can be created by saying set followed by empty pair of parentheses and not braces normally with a set you associate a pair of braces but when you are creating a empty set you have to use a pair of parentheses if one element is to be stored in a set then i have to just say the element within a pair of braces i do not need a comma here the way i needed it in case of a tuple and realize that a set can contain dissimilar elements name age salary all dissimilar they can also go into a set let me also tell you what are the common uses of sets one is in eliminating duplicate entries for example here we had 10 being repeated several times but only one 10 got stored when i attempted to assign this set of values to some variable d so i can get a tuple or a list and then if it contains non unique values and i wish to eliminate them i just have to use the set function convert this tuple or a list into a set using that set function and duplicates would automatically get eliminated second place is where i want to do membership testing whether a element is present within a set or not and there are very many other set operations that i can carry out to illustrate this membership testing as we go along we would certainly see how these operations work so much about what are sets and a few examples of it and the places where usage of set makes sense Let's now see how the storage happens in case of a set. Well, every element that gets stored for that element firstly a hash value is computed. To compute this hash value a hash function is used. That hash function is defined in such a manner that the elements do not collide with one another they are spaced apart as they are stored in the set. even we can create our own hash function for example we may say that if we are we are to store a number then take its first digit and last digit add them 
multiply it with 7, divide it by 3 and then obtain some index according to which or at that position within the set, the value will get stored. So hash function, there is an art in doing that, defining it in such a manner that elements do not collide with one another. So basically it's not index based storage, it's a hash value based storage. Hash value of any element, no matter whether you compute it at this moment or after some moments, that hash value is going to be same because you pass this value to a hash function and it will apply the same series of steps to obtain the hash value. So no matter when you insert the element, it is going to get inserted at the same position. Hence order of ins insertion would simply not matter. To demonstrate this to you, let me create three sets. Here is the first one containing 12, 23, 45, 16 and 52. Then I create one more set in which I use the same elements but I change the order of insertion. And then I create yet another where once again the elements remain same but the order of insertion is different. And what we find is that when we try to print them out saying print s print t and print u the order of access terms would be exactly same so all three would print out 12 45 16 52 and 23 since it is a hash value based storage no matter at what point in time you calculate the hash value it's going to turn out to be same that is why insertion order doesn't matter you insert in any order so long as the values are same they would be accessed in exactly the same order. So if you do print s, t and u, you are bound to get exactly the same result. Let's talk a little bit about the contents of a set. Well, it can contain strings, tuples, but never the lists. What could be the reason for this? Well, strings and tuples are immutable, means once created, content of a string or content of a tuple is never going to change, means its hash value would remain same. Since the tuple is fixed and the string is fixed, the hash value would be same. Unlike that, lists are mutable containers. So if it contains 5 elements and I obtain its hash value, I will get some hash value. If I delete one element or add one element and recompute the hash value, second time when I compute the hash value, it's likely to be different than the first. Hence, you can never store a list within a set. So if I say s1 equal to morning, comma evening, this would be fine because each element here is a string. Even this is okay, each element is a tuple. And since tuples are immutable, hash values would remain same. 12, 23 you will get one hash value, 15, 25 you will get another hash value and 17, 34 you get yet another hash value. So S1 and S2 are okay, but if I try to create a set containing list as its elements, this is something that would report an error. Lists are mutable, 12, 23 are present right now you may later on change to 12, 23, 17. Moment the contents change, hash value would change. Hence, you can never accommodate a list within a set. If I say a is equal to gate, fate, a tuple and a string, this should be fine. Appears to be, but realize that a nested tuple is fine, a nested list is fine, but a nested set is never allowed. So this is bound to report an error. Then if I have a set like this containing values 1, 2, 3, 4, I can easily unpack those values by saying star of x. We had seen this unpacking. Same unpacking concept can be applied to a set. You can unpack elements of a set by saying star of x. This unpacking we have talked about in relation to list, in relation to tuple, where we could unpack both of them using a star, 
well same is applicable even to a set so 1 2 3 4 is the output that we expect so much about what is a set what are its contents why insertion order is different than access order and where a set can really be put to some good use goodbye good luck and thank you